The old Cedar County Jail was built in 1892 on West 4th Street in Tipton, Iowa. The one-story structure contains four cells, a day room for the main cell block, and a vestibule area for admittance and release of prisoners. The north cell served as the maximum security cell. The south cell was for medium security prisoners. Another cell was located on the north side of the vestibule and originally housed female and juvenile prisoners. At full capacity, the jail could hold 10 inmates. The jail was attached to the jailer's residence, which had been built as a private residence 37 years earlier in 1855. From its inception until it closed in 2001, the sheriff, one of the deputies, or a jail supervisor lived in the residence, providing meals, laundry, and oversight of the prisoners. Through the years, there were numerous prisoners who escaped from the Cedar County Jail, including Lloyd Drehos and John Houston, who escaped in 1962, hiding in fields for three days before their recapture. They are shown here with patrolman Forrest Brady. When arrested, when are we going to be fed, was their main concern. The only confirmed death in the jail was on May 1, 1974, when 16-year-old Jeffrey Scott Felder was found hanging during a routine cell check. Felder had been arrested on a stolen car charge. Even though it was small, the jail did experience some of the same issues larger facilities did, including a strike by prisoners in January 1939. At that time, the jail was housing only three prisoners, Clarence Croc and Chester Warner, both serving time for drunk driving, and Roy Keenan, serving time for failing to support his family. They refused to shovel the sidewalks, stating that snow should come under an act of God, and as such was none of their business. The men eventually decided to shovel the walks. Visitors to the jail have reported a feeling of heaviness on the second floor of the jailer's residence. Unexplained voices have been heard, and the apparition of a Civil War-era soldier has been spotted. It is unclear who may be haunting this location or why. Another strange claim is that there is a small boy spirit who seems to be attached to a decorative basket. We investigated the old Cedar County Jail in February 2020. The temperature was around 38 degrees with light winds. While it had snowed several days before our investigation, there was no precipitation during our time there. After setting up four full-spectrum stationary cameras throughout the property, we began holding EVP sessions in the jail where we caught the following four EVPs. I was just asking more is it, whether somebody's coming around the corner to see me or not. I'm sorry, can you tell me that again? I didn't quite catch it. We also captured unexplained K2 hits. We also had some unexplained activity on the Periscope 360. You can see it slightly in the bottom of the static night vision camera. Knowing it was out of camera view, Dawn used her cell phone to capture it. Okay, I got the video on, on my phone anyway. We'll get ready to, because it'll make that noise before it oh, goes. Fingers. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, well, there goes. We spent some time trying to communicate with the spirits said to roam the residence and appeared to make contact with a child named Jacob. Do you know who the little boy is that's here? Is it Jacob? Why is he here? Did he live here? No. I heard that. I heard you laughing. What are you laughing at? What are you playing? Are you playing hide and seek? 
I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, honey. Tell me again. We also caught some strange light anomalies in the front parlor. While you will see what is clearly dust just before we arrive in the frame, there is something else captured. And finally, we caught an unexplained flash of light on the headrest of the rocking chair. We have slowed it down so you can see it. Is the old Cedar County Jail haunted? We caught some audio and video we can't explain, mainly in the former women's cell in the front parlor. It's worth another trip back to investigate further.